You're listening to The Art of Business with Jake Lee and Brian Arisal. So, going into this range of, I call it the life of a con, you know? And not... A con? A con, con job? <laughs> yeah, a con job. It's, okay. <laughs> um, with planning it out, going back to, like, really planning out this business, like, how many... Roughly, do you guys do a year? Cons? Ugh. Cons. Yeah. And you do all sorts of cons, by the way. You don't just do Comic Cons. You do you Comic do Cons, horror, horror, horror cons, cons, pop pop culture in general, yeah. conventions. I mean... Uh, the art things, art I do uh, art, yeah, art cons, and then uh, I do gallery shows. Gallery yeah. shows. So if you Straight put this, you put shows. them all in for one year, you put them all in a big pot, how many do you do? I don't know. 30? I don't know. Let's see. Ish. How many months are 12. 12. Okay. So about 24, least, 20. Yeah. I would say, you know, about two a month. Yeah. Two about a month. 20, 20, I don't know. We could go and look at the ledger and yeah, count them. I, we've never done that. But <laughs> yeah. I would say it's a, you know, we it's do a lot. about two, two and a half, three yeah. a month. Yeah. And you say it blends in, like sometimes it's just getting into the show. And yep. Yeah, yeah. The, um, you do this convention, you go, you go all these conventions, all these different ones, um, you started off at C2E2, it was a massive one, yeah. um, which is um, comic books, but now you're also doing a lot of horror, Yeah. and also, we were talking about this yesterday, was a Rocky Horror Convention. That you oh got. yeah, the Rocky Horror Cons, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You like that fucking segue? Dude, that is a good segue. smooth. Smooth. <laughs> Extra smooth. That's yeah. what happens when you got a fucking segue. Well, yeah. now I've got to edit out all this shit of you gloating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's so, uh, hor- horror cons yeah. and Rocky horror. Yeah. Yes. Two different. Okay. We um yeah well we do horror cons because we both really like we like horror we movies. generally like it yeah. I love horror movies. Yeah. What's your favorite horror movie? Man, I can't that's even a, tell you. That's an awful. Question. No, yeah. I already know it. I know mine. Tell me yours. Well, what's My yours? My favorite Descent. horror movie. I love Descent. Yeah. I, okay. I'm going to say this, but don't think less of and me. And Strangers. I love Strangers. Because if you don't understand, then I cannot help you. I really like <laughs> The Ring. I'm yeah. cool with that. Not, the newest one was God Awful, I heard. I, I didn't see it. But not, I, I like the, the one with Naomi Watts okay. a lot. That one scared me a lot. That movie actually scared me. So if a movie scares me. Yeah. Mine was Strangers yeah. and Descent. How about you, Michael? Oh, God. Uh, I don't know if this... I guess this would be considered horror. My mother let me watch this. The Exorcist, actually. Yeah. I was probably... What year did that come out? That was like... 74? 74. It, it was on Maybe? HBO one night. I had no idea. I was like, Mom, can I watch this? It was probably like 1980. Yeah. And she's like, mm, you're not going to sleep with me tonight. And I was like, no, I'm fine. Yeah, she let me watch it, and that was... Bed wetter right good. there. Yeah. <laughs> it was... Yeah, See, so. you, but you were never Catholic, so... No. I right. was, and I was like... I got an addition here. But What's yours, Brian? My favorite horror film? Yeah, right now. Spit it out. Oh. So sideway. This is like a... Okay. I've I've always got answers lined up for this when people ask me because they'll they'll say what's your favorite horror film or what's the scariest movie you've ever we seen. We just talked to Epion Five and Katrina and they told us to keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, yeah. So my favorite horror ABC, film, Brian. probably Evil Dead Two. Ooh, yeah, that's yeah. Um, yeah. That's a good one. It's the but movie it's I've seen the comedy. most. Yeah, because yeah, every whenever I have a bad day, I just put on Evil Dead Two, and I'm like, well, you know, Ash is having a rough day. Mine's not. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, it really, really. And, levels and, the playing field. And what's the thing I always say whenever anybody mentions Evil Dead 2? What? I, I always talk about how my cousin or something... Oh, yes, your cousin. ...did the animatronic uh, hand. The, the fake hand. The really? Hand, right. The hand that went bad, yes. Yeah. Rick, Rick Catazone. Yeah. He did that. Also, he did the uh, animation for Creepshow. Right. And some other stuff. Because... Yeah. Um, that one guy told me. Tom Savini. That one Savini. guy, Tom yeah. Savini. Tom, Tom Savini. Savini told me this, and I was like, well, okay. Oh, well, cool. Do you guys do any kind of setup or any kind of... This will work well with what ...different I mindset with going between comic book conventions and horror conventions? Oh, That was uh, my exact question. Yeah. Because yeah. you guys will bring certain subject matters for yeah. certain shows. Yeah. Well, okay. If we're gonna do a sure. horror con, um, if I want to, if I have time to work on something new, or I, I need, uh, or I have room to put up new work, I will work on something horror related. And I've done specifically horror related work, and uh, you know, usually I just have out everything that I've done. So 
But, I do yeah. the same thing. Yeah. He is a little more, um, what's the word, <laughs> prolific than I am <laughs> as far as making stuff. So he he will focus on bringing more horror. More horror. Related, I'll try to make as much stuff as I can. Support. Canvas pieces. Yeah. I see. One of the things about like speaking about the art of selling and everything is. Um, so I, I like to bring all my canvas pieces to the shows because once people realize that, oh my God, that's the actual painting, that's also a selling tactic too. They don't just think it's the, they might think it's a poster, but when they realize that that's the real deal, they want a little piece of that. And if they can't afford it, oh, a $20 print, they'll take it. Yeah. But I also like to make uh, intermediate pieces, which can be like just a hundred bucks for like a head on wood. So Price points. Price points, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's and, and the thing about the horror cons, and that's, it's funny you bring this up. Like comic conventions and horror conventions, it's it's a different mindset, I think, a different audience. Yeah. The at the Comic Cons, like a lot of people you can joke with the people, you can do our our our, our spiels that we do when we sell stuff. We we did a, a show in Jersey called Chiller, which was pretty pretty cool, but uh, it's a different audience. It's not a bunch of little kids running around looking for Doctor Who shit. These are like serious horror collectors who, yeah. are, who are much older. Yeah, it's an older crowd, definitely. So it's the jokes crowd. don't work with them because they don't give a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they they've been around. They've yeah. heard all they've the heard jokes. That jo- yeah, yeah, they've heard that joke. But the funny thing is, a lot of these guys and girls and anybody who goes to these horror cons. They're serious about going there and buying stuff. They're there yeah. to collect something. They want uh, I think originals. I know yeah. what that is, though, is that there's not a lot of like merchandise for like, obscure horror yeah. and obscure sci-fi. Yeah. There's a ton of Doctor Who shit out there. Yeah. You can right. dime a dozen. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So, like, the horror cons, like, we, we did a one called Horror Hound, which was an indie. We didn't really know what to expect. And, like, usually comic conventions have, like, VIPs because they can get it early. And usually it's just a shit show. VIPs never do anything. It's who the fuck cares. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, when he says that, he means they they usually get in line for the celebrities. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. Yeah. They're, 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 not they're not there, there to buy our stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, so who the fuck cares? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, but we did Horror Hound, and the you know the VIPs got in. I wasn't expecting anything. Was it like thirty minutes early, an hour early? I yeah, saw it this. was an hour. I saw yeah. this fucking post. Yeah, I was and there. Like, yeah, you were there. Yeah. And like within an hour, I sold nearly all of my wooden heads. Like I didn't have anything for anybody that showed up on Saturday. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god! And it's like these people. Do, do you feel disappointed or sad? Like kind of bad that like the people who like at the end of the convention throughout the week like. I don't have. I feel my good work. and bad about it. I I feel bad, especially if it's somebody that I know is coming to get to see one. Me. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, because I, I don't want to hold it. If somebody's gonna give me the cash, I need to take it because I gotta. Daddy you got, got bills. Big, got bills. Full time. Yeah. 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 Daddy got to buy Daddy Daddy's got, medicine. Daddy's gonna get you dead. Daddy's medicine. <laughs> and uh, and uh, but at the same time, is it, that Seagrams? You're talking about Seagrams? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> at the same time, the bottom shelf. Though. Sponsored by Seagrams, extra smooth. Extra smooth. <laughs> yeah. uh, at the same time, though, even though I like I sold all my spray painted wooden heads, it worked in my favor in that it creates uh, a want for it because people are like I missed out on that. I'm like, yeah, you missed it, and then they actually will show up the next year because they want to snag right. that head. Supply and demand. And or that, check the website. That ha- or check the Four website. Yeah. And that Our happened w- with the uh, David Bowie heads that I did. I did these David Bowie spray painted heads on wood and I did that for a C2E2 one year. And I had like six small ones. I sold them all, I think that Friday. And people that showed up Saturday and Sunday were just disappointed. And then the next year, I had some David Bowie heads. And sure enough, that Friday, people from last year actually showed up. Because awesome. they wanted to get what the stuff that they missed out on. That's so, amazing. That's crazy. Love it. So you got to, yeah, so you know, if you sell stuff, you got to kind of play it up. That Oh, I, I mean, I don't like doing the hard sell because I don't want to be that dick salesman. But I do let people know. This is the only one yeah, I have. This, if so you, if you, you want, if you want it. it Gotta show up early. Fool, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a good. That's a great feeling. Fool of a took. That's a great feeling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, was that New Orleans show like? I sold a bunch of originals at that. Yeah. Oh, you saw the Rocky Horror original. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. And I, I think even that one, because that Rocky Horror is one of those things that you don't usually bring out in your Comic Con mm-hmm. stuff. It's oh, usually we, your. We your do now. Stuff. Exactly. We, that's now. when you it's, were like, dude, we need to start putting out that Rocky yeah. Horror yeah. thing. It is very relevant, and with the younger people too. Yeah. And younger, Gary Boswick at every single con. Yeah. He sure. <laughs> is. Good old Which old is not a bad thing. He's a great dude. Look up the guest kids. See the guests. So we talked about horror cons. 
and the different types of cons. Um, do you guys do anything else? Any kind of like gallery shows, art fairs? Um, and what's your thoughts on both? Yeah. Ah. 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 You, got, you got two right. co-hosts that do two different things okay. now. Okay. So you're going to keep one friend and make an enemy. Oh, okay. That's not... Um, they already hate you. I will go first since I already am going. Um, <laughs> gallery shows. Um, I will do gallery shows, but I don't go out of my way to do gallery shows. Uh, they take a very large commission, some of them. And that's fine. That's fine. You know, but I mean... Like 40, 50%. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I do like doing um, shows at uh, small galleries, you know, run by friends and... Cool people. Yeah. <laughs> fellow, fellow artists and, you know, grass roots or whatever you call it. Yeah. I, I enjoy that. That's that's good stuff right there. I, I like that. I'm not... It's okay really... to call my gallery out if you want to. <laughs> no. No. no, I'm not doing... <laughs> um, and as far as art fair festivals and shit. There's one that I do. We have one in Cham- actually Champaign, Illinois is a very uh, artsy place and there are quite a few uh, art festivals that happen there and there's this one that we're usually around when it's going on called the Boneyard Fest. Oh yeah, I know about the Boneyard. Yeah, the yeah. Boneyard Fest and um, we've done uh, we've had a booth at the Boneyard Fest a couple times and it's a big fest. It, it goes all over Champaign and Urbana and then other parts of Champaign County for the whole weekend. It's a really complicated thing. There's like a map and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. What it is is um, different galleries will do things. People's houses will open up. Different studios, you know, artists' private studios. That sounds open. awesome. It's really cool. When does that happen? In the spring, like April something or other. So you did, or you've kind of already done it this year. Well, um, actually, we didn't do it this year because what oh, no. we've done uh, recently was we have friends that do, like, sort of a, a cooperative, like, collaborative... Collective. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yes, a collective. Yes, yeah. a collective yeah. thing. That's the word I was looking for. And, yeah, they would have, like, a, a space and, a uh, like, a event center and have a few different artists and vendors and stuff there. They'd have, like, guys doing glass blowing That's awesome. guys spray painting and yeah so that was cool it was like a bigger one of the bigger events happening at the boneyard fest so yeah we've done that one a couple times but they didn't really have that going on this year okay. so we didn't really do anything and also i think we had a convention at that i think time so too. i think it was a scheduling issue yeah so if we're around like i really would like to do more local stuff but i mean it just it's depends cheaper. on our it is yeah. cheap. <laughs> Let me, uh, uh, to intervene really quick, um, it must kind of suck to schedule, like, a show and then see another show pop yeah. up yeah. that same weekend. You're like, I have friends in this neighborhood, in this city, and I could visit them, and or, like, this is a better one, I didn't know it was like, because I feel like with conventions, um, it switches, they switch months almost sometimes, and yeah. weeks, and you really gotta be on top of that yeah. and schedule it out, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do do that. Yeah, like, you know, we have the uh, few big ones that we always make a point to do. I mean, we always yeah. do C2E2. I mean, we don't get into the Artist Alley, but we do get an exhibitor booth. Yeah. And that one, I mean, that one's taking place in March. It's taking place in April. You know, so there, that's a big one. Also, Indiana Comic Con is another really big one that we do. And, like, this past year, they were one weekend after the other. Yeah, and I that's, remember that. And those are two huge shows and it's kind of hard to pr- to prepare for that. I mean, because you got to have prints, you'll sell out of a lot of stuff, then mm-hmm. you got to go get more prints, you got to replace any originals, blah 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 blah. Just yeah. the driving, just the physical toll. Yeah, it's you know, it's, it's the rock and roll lifestyle. Yeah. And how about you, Epion? Oh, I forget the question again. What are you talking about? <laughs> the uh, galleries, art fair. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like when I saw you. Yeah. I mean, you were already in some. It was yes. kind of weird. I I don't really know how to explain it because I think I feel bad in some ways. Um. <laughs> so yeah, kind of like the kind of like the comic cons. I you know like I just jumped into and started doing C two E two like one of the biggest things as far as galleries are concerned. Um, I started just doing some kind of big gallery shows with Spoke Art, Hero Complex. 
These are huge, by the way, in the pop culture yeah. world. Yeah. Uh, like, me and Brian have both been like... We've sent emails to them and heard nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Art, Hero Complex. And uh, you just Gal- got two... Gallery 1988. And you just got two emails this there month? Some, some other ones. Uh, Gauntlet Gallery. And then uh, Spoke had some shows in New York that mm-hmm. I was a part of. Um, the weird thing is, like, I did, I did send emails to some of them. You know, saying like, hey, this is my work. And then they got back and said, hey, yeah, if you'd like to be in these shows, please do so. I think Spoke Art, I think actually Ken, who runs Spoke, just reached out to me and I didn't even know him. He found me online. I was like, hey, I've seen your work somewhere. I think he saw it in New York at, at the Artist Alley and invited me to be in uh, one of the Wes Anderson Bad Dad shows. And so, like, just kind of like right off the bat, I was doing like all these three galleries did like, you know how big that is not really I didn't know I mean I, I I looked them up online I saw that they were doing a lot of contemporary shows that were very pop centric and I, I enjoyed that but I didn't realize how big they were until I actually did the Wes Anderson show didn't they do a book of that too they did yeah they yeah. recently came out with a book published by Abrams Publishing and it's called Bad Dads and it's basically a collection of all the artwork from the previous uh, Wes Anderson shows so I have uh, two pieces that are in the book so it's I think there's a foreword by Wes Anderson too so so yes applaud no, <laughs> and um, yeah it's Spoke Art and they're doing some really awesome shows and I yeah I don't It's it was kind of weird like it was cool to be a part of it but I don't think I ever got to really appreciate it because I never went to the shows you never went to any of the opening? no because they're, so they're based far. in San Francisco yeah. so I would send them I would make the work I would send them the work and then I, I would just see pictures of the reception oh, I never actually gosh. went but most of the stuff I sent them ended up selling like the Wes Anderson stuff sold they did a show in New York which was uh, a Martin Scorsese exhibit which I was super happy to be invited to that so for that I did like four pieces where everyone had to do like a Scorsese character, so I did like Bill the Butcher, Willem Dafoe is Jesus, Dafoe Jesus, oh, yeah. uh, tra- Dafoe Jesus, uh, Taxi Driver, uh, and then Iris, the, which is kind of awkward looking back because it's an underage prostitute. Right. Um, so <laughs> kind of the Jodie Foster. The Jodie Foster character. character. Good job. Taxi Driver. So that was like a fun and weird time. Uh, I'll tell this story. She she likes me to tell this. I do. I, I in fact I. Force him to tell. She you. does. I love to hear it. Up. Have you heard this? No, I, I, I only heard Kiss. That's all. Kiss. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so, like the Scorsese exhibit, you know. Again, this was a show that was taking place in New York. I, I couldn't go. I couldn't drive out there. So I actually sent my invite to a couple of our friends out there and said, "Hey, you guys can go." So they went and took pictures of it for me, and and uh, I saw the picture that all all the paintings sold. Because they I, had the dot. The, the red, red dot. dot. Yeah. It, dot. If anyone doesn't know in a gallery, if there's a red dot, it usually means it's sold or on hold. Yeah. So that night, the opening night, all four sold. And the, but then I got the email from Spoke that said, hey, um, just to let you know, uh, Scorsese purchased a bunch of artwork from the show, and your Bill the Butcher was the piece. No his way. Piece, so, yeah. Marvin yeah. Scorsese bought one of your pieces of artwork. Yes. So now... Whenever anyone looks at the print, and I had the of print the at, the at Butcher, Comic-Con. I say, "Would you like to know who owns the original painting of that?" That's a great selling point. <laughs> and I usually, when I tell them, "Well, they buy the print," yeah. so there you go. Now, in all fairness, yeah. he's he's a huge uh, collector of art, so uh, uh, he he may not own it because he does give a lot of artwork away. So he may have given that to one of his friends. So for all I know, maybe Daniel Day-Lewis has it. And he just retired from acting. He did just, just retire. So, yeah. yeah, so um, so I, yeah, I was doing a lot of gallery shows. So it was kind of stressful because I was doing the Comic-Cons. I was making artwork for gallery shows. You pay for like the shipping yeah, pay, out of pocket. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no guarantee that it'll sell. That's yeah. the other thing. That is a it's, big thing for any inspiring artist that wants to do gallery shows or any kind of group shows is that in today's day and age... You do, you pay for the shipping. Yeah. Um, a lot of people really that sucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you yeah. should have to do that. But and that's they, one thing that I. That's one reason why I'm not really. That you're not a big fan yeah. of the gallery. The gallery it's a ship stuff. stuff. They I should mean, they should pay for. That. I I've had but issues maybe. with the shipping too because you gotta. I mean, you could just go it. buy a box, but it's a shitty box. I had I yeah. shipped a painting to. Uh, I think it was Hero Complex. I did this really large three by four painting of uh, the, a shining piece of Jack Nicholson holding Danny on his lap. 
and I sent it to them and they sent me photos back. The box was damaged. You could clearly see that the hole in the box was made by the, the tong of a forklift. Mm. And it went through the box, it went through the bubble wrap, and it went through the plastic and just stopped short of going through the actual oh canvas. Oh my gosh. I would have had a heart attack. So, <laughs> so like shipping is it's a bitch because you don't know if it's going to get there in one piece. Yeah. And then if you don't sell it, you're out. The curator will hold it until you feel it's time to pay for the shipping to come back to you. I actually I think they, have been lucky. They yeah, haven't they, charged me they to ship sent, back. Yeah, they, Ooh, they usually lucky um, you. Ship, yeah. pay for the shipping back. Uh, but he, I mean, but I saw, they he usually sells, of my work, so he usually sells stuff. I've made the money. Show, but yeah. You made the money. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> but still, once they take their commission, once you factor in the cost That's of the, the materials thing. and the labor, oh, God. you're not making shit for money. Well, and... I, I, I always like to tell this to people is like if they see my work at an art fair or through a private appointment when I used to have my studio and they'd be like wasn't this higher at this place mm-hmm. and I'd be like yes it is and here's why yeah um, this gallery takes 40% you yeah. know and so you need to this is my base price I add 40% on top of that so he gets his cut and I still walk away with my price. Yes, see that—that's gallery pricing. Yes, it yeah. is. Gallery pricing is different um, than you know if you sell it yourself through the artist. And yeah, some people I've had people stop at our booth and say, "Oh my God, you should really charge more for your artwork." And I'm I get like, that well, too. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> sure. But you know, I can afford to you know charge this much because I'm doing all the I'm doing stuff. I'm doing DIY the, here. I I'm doing the marketing, opinion. I'm doing the setup, yeah. I'm doing the shipping. Mm-hmm. I get mad actually when Do people the, old, the photography say something about print. price. Yeah? I got snippy sometimes with people. Oh, uh, at I least online cuz then I, I break it down and I'm like, "Okay, yeah, this, you think this painting that's $500 is too much?" Oh. <laughs> you know right. what I say to them? Yeah. I guess it's not for you. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes I broke it down. This and is like, for serious <laughs> collectors. <laughs> so. We're not a snobby podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> but, but like the reality, like the gallery shows, you know, if I sell a painting for $400, I'm only getting 200 of it because it's a 50% commission minus the shipping, which is like 50 bucks, yeah. minus the cost of all the materials, which is another maybe 50, 100 bucks. I'm left with, I don't know, like 50, 50 bucks yeah. profit. Yeah. It's it's a rough, so like you really have to add their commission on top of your base price mm-hmm. to make what you believe your painting is worth, which it is. It's just it's it's hard because a lot of people are like why and and there's no gam- it's a gamble. You, you you don't know if you're gonna sell it to the gallery. There's no yeah. There's no there's so, no guarantee. Yeah, the gallery has to do the work of you know. I mean that's why they're getting their that commission yeah, is that they're they supposed gotta, to be they paying pay for bills too. So. Yes. Yeah. They're I mean, selling the mattress now. They're yeah. selling the mattress. Yes. They've got the brick and mortar. Yeah. They have to do the marketing and promoting. I mean, th- that's what their commission's based off of. Yeah. I read a really fascinating article, actually, this week through um, Photo Design Magazine. And if you notice or haven't noticed, that there are a lot of brick and mortar galleries mm-hmm. disappearing. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense in a sad way, almost, that with the high percentage of commission that galleries take an artist is now not saying an artist is basically like well if you're going to take 50 percent, then i'm not going to show here i'm going to put it on the web which is so vast that and so big and there's so many different outlets these days to sell why why do these brick and mortars and now they're disappearing you know it's kind of it's sad because i'm a big gallery fan i mean these commissions are very high yes but i I mean, I you know, it's, I think it's worth it. It is, and like especially like with the galleries like Spoke and Hero Complex in 1988, because they're doing these really cool shows that are like like the Comic Cons that we do, mm-hmm. and all the 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 subject matter that we do. Yeah, it applies to these gallery shows. They also have a brand recognition mm-hmm. exposure. Yeah. yeah, they know. They I mean, they're not just doing this to do it. They do it because it is their business. Yeah. They know what they're doing. They do it well. We can see it. I yeah. mean, and that's why you're paying for it. And it makes sense. It's just sad that from 20 years ago to now, you don't... I mean, we could drive down the street and at least find one gallery. No, we can't. But we can find 20,000 galleries on our mobile device. Yeah. You do some art fairs and some shows at times, and you've gotten into some big, recognizable shows. The gallery, yeah, that's slowed down, though, a lot for me. Like, I... 
like this past year, I really had. I don't think I've done any with the galleries on the West Coast. I still do a lot of work with Gallery F in Chicago, but I, I did get a couple invites to uh, some 1988 shows. So I'll probably do at least. I know I'm doing one of those for sure. So nice. Tell me if you're right. I mean, you're represented by a gallery. Yes, uh, that would be Gallery F in Chicago. They're located on they just Milwaukee. Moved, right? Yeah, they're still in Milwaukee though. Yeah. So There's just like a block north of where they were before. Okay. So now they're on the other side of Fullerton. Milwaukee near Fullerton. Fullerton. Yeah. Near. Near. <laughs> no. Yeah, so they're a cool gallery and they're kind of in the same vein as like Spoke and Hero Complex. They, they deal with like contemporary art, street art inspired work. And uh, so they're always doing shows and their new gallery that they have is pretty cool because they have their main floor. They also have a basement too that they've converted into a small gallery so like tonight they're actually having a reception of a main show going on and then a completely separate show downstairs so like two shows for one it's and you're awesome. with us thank you so much yeah, you're showing yeah. stuff there right I, now yeah. aren't you? I actually have a, a piece in the show tonight so the reception I was trying to figure out how I can go to that I was going to try to bribe you into driving me up there originally that's an easy bribe I think I talked to you last week or yeah. something when I was drunk yeah. Uh, a week, couple weeks ago, I was yeah. drunk and I was like, "Yeah, I need you to drive me to Chicago on Friday." <laughs> yeah, I totally would have been down to do yeah. it, but but the pod- tattoo appointment, tattoo appointment, yeah. and then like you went a podcast. I mean, a podcast is good, so yeah. I skipped out on a. Well, thanks, buddy. Right. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. That would have been tough. I'm to in a room with friends. To yes, get to I friends. Friends. <laughs> friends and fun times. Friends and fun times. All these conventions that you go to, you, you have to have like at least one amazing story and one horror story. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that's a good question. All right, there's a lot. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. I don't, you know, I just, as me doing convention, you probably have, I've had some horror stories in both art fair and like that. And I, you guys do it three times a month. There, there's got to be a good one. I've, okay, I've got some stories of where I've lost my temper. Yeah, those are good. You lost your temper? Oh yeah, you, oh, it's rare you're, too. You're like the most chill. Okay. Person I've met. You're always I very try. on a, a very zen vape wave path. <laughs> <to your> sanctuary. <laughs> um, I, yeah. Well, thank you. I, I'm glad you think so. I try. You know, I try to be to be cool and laid back. You know, now you're forcing it. I know, I'm forcing <laughs> no, it. No. I went into like a Travolta. Yeah. My head. My head. My I work head. out there in my head. You hit my head. <laughs> so, all right. Sometimes I will lose my temper at people when they're rude. And. Disrespectful, too. Yes. Yeah. At conventions, you will have that sometimes. You know. As a at, female. Well, feels... there's that. There's the whole harassment, gross, pervert thing that happens. And when I used to do cosplay, because I thought it would be a good idea to do cosplay at the booth to attract people to the booth, but then I noticed it was attracting the, wrong the attention <laughs> that I did not like. Yeah. Like, you know. So Weirdness. I don't do that no more. So I, now I just am me. I don't really dress up as... Anything. You be yourself? I'm you... just me. Though, sometimes, though people always ask me if I'm dressed as a character because I look like I might be. But that's just how I look. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, but I, I will lose my temper with people when they're rude. And people can be very rude. And when I say rude, I'm, I'm talking about, like, when they, they say something rude about the artwork. Mm. Like, if they say something, if they cr- criticize my work, I'm like, eh, whatever. But if they say something about Epion 5's work, and it's just mean, I will lose it. I will lose my shit. Okay. You and hear I've got that, two, people? I've got two stories. Is this like when you're not around? I, if, if she's going to tell the one story, I was around. There's, there's okay. two, I, I've got yeah. two stories. Okay. So, that's Let's hear good. it. What but happened? It, but I do want a good story afterwards. Okay. We always want the rainbows at the end. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. We should have named this podcast The Rainbows at the, the End. The Rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> We're still in development. That's yeah, true. Rainbow. We could change it. So at C2E2, not this past year, but the year before, oh, um, it was like the first day. I was tired. Okay, I'm not a morning person. I don't like You're getting not? up. Yeah. I don't like getting up early ever. And I need like 700 cups of coffee to get me through these days. She brings her own percolator. I know that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, we were at uh, C2E2 and a guy, some dude, was walking by and he saw um, Epion 5's uh, print of the dude. Big Lebowski. And he was like, 
oh yeah, look that. How much for that? And uh, and Effion Five said, oh, that's twenty dollars. And he's like, I don't like it that much, not for that price. And then he walked. He started walking away. And I was like, hey, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's rude. Yeah. yeah. That was rude. I mean, $20 eat. is a perfectly fine price to pay for a large print. He, yeah. he even pulled it out and was holding it. He was touching yeah. it. He touched it. He, he touched picked it up. It. Oh. Not for that price. That's rude. It he, is. That's, it is. The artist is standing right yeah. fucking <laughs> there. You don't say shit like that. It when, ain't worth it. When I do when I do art fairs, yeah. people will walk by and be like, that's... I'm, that's just not art. Just keep walking. And I, yeah, I've gotten that too. And like, literally, I'm just like sitting in my fucking half foot stool and I go, fuck you. Yeah. See, I still got the, the retail mind. The where, eyes and smiles retail? Yeah, where I still have to pretend to be nice to someone even if they insult me because I might get fired. But I don't have right. to anymore. Yeah, I don't have to do that. Oh, it's so free. But it's ingrained Once, in me. You uh, know? Break it. You gotta I, break, I break through that wall like the Kool-Aid man. Yeah. <laughs> Again, back to the Kool-Aid man. Um, I was gonna do my Kool-Aid man, but it sounds like Macho Man Randy Savage. Every time I did, oh yeah. Oh, I like the that. Macho Kool-Aid man. Slap um, into a slinger. Yeah. Oh, see, you've got impersonations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Oh, the other. The other story yeah. I have. This shit happened today. Oh. oh. It happened Hot today. off the presses. Yeah. This is an exclusive. It happened today. Hmm. Here, okay. here! Get you your were, paper! You were not there for this. No, you were not there. Okay. He was not there. The ink is fresh. Let's the hear it. The ink is fresh. Okay. God damn. Hallelujah. All right. So <laughs> what happened was was this. Um, he he was not there. He stepped away from the booth for a minute, and I was kind of standing out on the edge there, um, covering two tables. Right. The yeah. way we have the booth set up this time. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, if you want to stay out of people's way so they could come in and look at the stuff, you got to kind of stand out in the hall a little yeah. bit. So that's where I was. And as I was standing out there, um, a, a mom type and a daughter type, uh, they were walking by. Fucking humans. <laughs> and the mom type looked up and saw his, um, his Snape painting. He did a nice Severus Snape Mm -hmm. stencil and spray paint painting and she says something like this she says oh god that snake looks horrible why why did he paint him in blue he looks like a corpse oh my god now first of all he's colorblind <laughs> that is true yeah. but yeah. she didn't know that yeah but second of all that's fucking rude so yeah. i said um i was like you better be careful because you might hurt the artist's feelings with your rude ass and, uh, <laughs> and they just walked, walked off. They didn't and, say anything. She did not say anything. Else, oh, that's too bad. I will pay you that was to work rude. my booth. <laughs> <laughs> that that shit is rude. I it mean, is. if you have some kind of um, constructive criticism, yeah, by all means, you know, please don't hold back. No. You think you know your shit? Whatever. You think you got a better way to do the shit? Oh yeah. Please. Please enlighten us with this shit, okay? Well, that, that and this, this is a great piece of advice for any aspiring artist that wants to do any kind of show, put their work out there. You're going to get them. No oh, matter yeah. how good you are or yeah. how bad you are, Yeah. you're going to get them, and you guess what? You've got to get that thick skin, and you mm -hmm. got to brush it off. Not everybody's going to like your work. Yeah. But yeah. if somebody's just outright rude, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've. I've had a few where it's been like, well, this is how I would do it. And they say, yeah, but you didn't. I did it. I did it. Me. Yeah. Not you. You could do it. Go do it. Go do it. You don't need to buy it if you can do it. Yeah. Now get on out of here. Yeah. If you could do it, I wouldn't need to do it. Right. Yeah. So if you could do it, you'd be where I'm at. Yeah. Someone put, <laughs> some person told me to do my work on tile. Mm. And I said, enjoy that. Go ahead. <laughs> you do you it. You do that. Tile? You like tile? You fucking do some tile. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. I've never done I never even put tile in the fucking bathroom or kitchen. Why would I want yeah. to touch it now? You yeah. don't want to mess with the grout and shit? The groutening. Yeah. The groutening. <laughs> this time. It's personal. There's a there's one type of critic though that I do enjoy. Mm. Actually this is cute. It's fun. Like the adults. Adults should fucking know not to say that shit right? yeah. kids. kids kids oh we were doing a wizard world once Bless in Chicago I and I had a Matt Smith painting up behind me and I saw this little kid in the distance you see I saw it he saw my Matt Smith painting and his <gasps> eyes he got so excited yeah. 
and I could see he came walking towards my painting, and then he his face changed. Like he looked at it and he said, mm, "No, look better far away." <laughs> I just shrugged my shoulders like, yeah, all right, you're a kid. Right. You know, that's funny. Ah, uh, the words of a child. Yeah, um, yeah I had a kid um, who saw my Walter White. You know, I, I zoomed in and got, like, uh, all the smokers, wrinkles of Brian Cranston's face, all the sun damage, all that. You know, I like to draw But texture. we still like Brian Cranston. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a, Walter White, you know, he's... Yeah, I know, I know exactly. Rough what shit. But this kid was like, he's ugly. And I was like, that he is. <laughs> That's true. And, you know, when you get a good, uh, like, any kind of a visceral reaction, oh, yeah. that yeah. means you've done your damn job. Right, so, you know, right. That's good. So, um, oh, no. Okay. I I want you to tell the, uh, it's got all the shit. Oh, the shit. In the background. Oh yeah, the that's show. a fun one. one. Yeah, and then we'll it, get to the good stuff. Okay. Yeah, in case you did. Okay, like as far as, <laughs> like the, as far as the stencil work that I do goes, because like, I have to explain this. Yes. I take Chinese newspapers. And I rip that. I rip that up. And I glue all the newsprint to the stretch canvas first. Then I spray paint each stencil there on top. So the Chinese newsprint fills in the negative space of the painting and gives it an added dimension to it. A nice, a nice, you know, aesthetic to it. I had a woman who bought a. She liked. I don't even remember what the print was, but she bought the print, and uh, and then she looked at it, and she was confused by what was in the background, and she wanted her money back because there's a. And her, this was her words. Uh, there's a bunch of shit in the background. <laughs> To which my response was, "That shit is supposed to be there." I'm like, Excuse me, ma'am, but that quote-unquote shit, shit. <laughs> is supposed to be there. It's like, oh, Jesus. I put that shit there. Yeah. So exactly. I, I thought he should get business cards made. This yeah. Time. Epion 5, quote, that shit is supposed to be there. <laughs> Fucking animals. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, to be on a positive note, yeah. all right. Gold I, at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> the gold. I don't really have any specific incidents of this but this is my favorite thing about doing this job and that is when I get uh, girls young girls that come up to me and talk to me about being an artist and they're like I you know they're like I didn't know you could do this you know you don't really see too many female artists doing yeah. this sort of thing and uh, I I really like when I, I see a little glimmer in their eyes when they're like I could I could maybe one day do this shit, you know? It's very, this shit. It's and they, very inspiring. And um, so I like that. And I like I like seeing other female artists at these. I mean, there aren't nearly as many female artists as there are man artists mm, in, man. in the comic book world. Yeah. Or the comic convention man. world. But they are there. And, um, yeah, it's, it's nice. The uh, short number of years that I've been doing this, I've been seeing more and more every year. Good. When I go back to conventions, I see more and more female artists. And that is important because, you know, females got some interesting stuff to say, too. So there you go. There's, there's that. That's good. Yeah. That's awesome, though, that you say that is like an awesome highlight is to inspire other people. I never thought any time in my life that if I put something on a piece of canvas, board, silk screen or print, that someone would look at that and be like, I'd like to try that. Yeah. I never had that. I just, you know, I, I imagine myself when I was young and I never, ever met a female artist when I was young. And I've, you know always been artistically inclined like I said before I came out the womb wanting to do artwork you know like it's always been something that was just the thing that I, I could do you know mm -hmm. I've always been praised for it all my teachers my parents my relatives everybody you're a great artist you're a great blah, 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 blah. that's what you're gonna be when you grow up blah, 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 blah. and um, but I never knew ever never ever ever knew of any other female artists not even really famous ones i think the first female artist i ever learned about was like georgia o'keefe and you know i was already like 12 years old when i even learned of her existence mm. and that was when we had to draw cow skulls in my art class <laughs> relentlessly <laughs> for like times. a month Mm. Same cow school. But anyway, I digress. So that's that's why yeah. I love doing this. So yeah. anyway. Positive story for me. Yeah. Uh, but yours is like very inspirational. Mine's kind of a <laughs> fan service moment that I enjoyed. 
I know yeah, it. I know, know it. This so the nice thing about going to Comic Cons is and like being a vendor is you get to set up and sometimes you get to run into the celebrities. That's pretty cool. So we were doing Cincinnati Comic Con and I was in the booth by myself. Katrina had stepped away with her daughter to go to the bathroom, I think. Or no, we went to go buy candy. candy. They had a chocolate <laughs> booth, and I was like, chocolate? Chocolate fix. Uh, see, uh, that's where I am. So I was working the booth by myself, and I had my big, my very large David Bowie spray painted on wood head, and this guy enters the booth, and he's looking at stuff, and he's standing right next to me, and I look mm-hmm. at him, and he looks familiar, but he's so close to me that I, I, I can't figure out who this guy is, but I'm like, I, I, I know this guy. And he asked me, he's like, hey, he's like, is, is this your work? And I'm like, yeah, this is my work. He's like, I like it. It's very nice. And then uh, he looks at the Bowie heads that I had a large one and a small one. He's like, he's like, how much are those? And I'm like, well, the, the Bowie heads, one, large one's 150, the small one is 60. And he's like, okay, oh, great, I'll take them. I was like, really? And then I looked at his face and I realized, that's, this is John Barrowman from Doctor Who. And at that point, I, because I love Doctor Who, that's I started sweating, I started getting nervous, <laughs> and then I, I looked. As at, you'd already closed the sale. Yeah, I already closed the sale, <laughs> and then but I looked at him and I was like, I could, I was in disbelief. I I looked right in his face. I was like, wait, you're and he goes, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> and then and then I, I looked out and I see Katrina and Miranda yeah. standing outside the booth. Just they were. We okay. We were walking to the chocolate, <laughs> and we passed John Barrowman mm. and. We were both like, was that just John Barrowman that walked past us? And, you know, we got all googly because we both like him. Yeah. You know. So we went and bought some chocolates. And then when we came back, and we spent a long-ass time buying those chocolates. (laughs) How were the chocolates? They were delicious. Awesome. Uh, And then when we came back to the booth... We were elbowing each other. We were like, this is the John Barrowman's in our booth right now. <laughs> and then I was like, bah, 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 bah. and yeah, he was buying uh, the his artwork. And I was like, they were basically making fun of me too because I was starting to get stuttering. Yeah, it was, I was like, hilarious. I, I just want you to know I'm a, I'm a, a really big fan of <laughs> work. And... And he's like, well, how much for shipping? And I was like, no, sir. Shipping's free. <laughs> and you know, then I elbowed you know, him all. You don't pay for shipping. He can afford to pay yeah. for shipping. Yeah, he could. He whipped out a giant wad of cash out of his pocket, and yeah. he paid me the cash. And then there were, like, other people just standing there, because they see John Berman in the right. booth talking, and they're like, oh, is there just, like, a crowd? Because typically, they got to stand in line they for, like, an stand, hour yeah. to see this dude. And they so, cash. Yeah, and he's talking to me, and I was just dumbfounded and just like, oh, my God. And like he had an assistant with him. He's like, okay, well, my assistant will give you the shipping address. And then, and then, and then, and then he left. And I was just like, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. And then I realized, you know, I, I didn't get a picture with him. Nothing like that. And then. But I took some pictures. You, yeah, she took pictures. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you just see like Epi on five, like in yeah, the he was like sweating, oh, clenched crying up, crying and vomiting. Crying and vomiting. Might I add? <laughs> might I add? Uh, you can tell a lot about a person when you photograph them. And I could tell John Barrowman thought my man was hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> John Barrowman you, likes the dude. You, 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 you get to see it because John Barrowman made a second appearance at the booth ah. because he then came back to the booth. Was he misted? No, he was not misted. <laughs> he wasn't you glistening. Were I was, yeah. I was all sweating. And he came back to the booth and he was like, oh, he's like, oh man, I'm sorry. Did you, did you want a picture with me? And I was like, yes, yes, I would. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so I like I pulled out my phone and again I started to get real nervous. You didn't take your shirt off. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, oh, the funny thing is we were dressed the same too. Yeah, they were wearing the same, same pants, outfit. same uh, black t-shirt. It was you a... can't even say your words right now. No, like, no, I couldn't. It was black <laughs> t-shirt. Like... Like, I pulled out my phone and like nervous and I'm like, oh, okay, John, uh, this is how you take a picture. And he's like, I know how to do this. <laughs> like, I do this for a living. I, I know how to do this. So then, yeah, he, he took a selfie with me and him. And then she took pictures of us taking selfies. And then, like, peop- like this one girl came into the booth because she saw, there's John Barrowman again. And so, like, he's standing with his arm around me, and I got my arm around him. And this girl's like, excuse me, can I get a picture with you? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you got to go to the booth. Back in line. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, this is awesome. So then his assistant gave me his home address. So, uh, not that I'd ever stalk him or anything like that. <laughs> Watch out, John. So, but yeah, I got to send him artwork, and then he bought uh, he bought a piece either for him or his husband, and then uh, the second piece that he bought was, I believe, for his sister, so I got to send that to her. So, that was, cool. it's just, it's kind of neat. 
Yeah. I mean, Katrina has also met celebrities too at conventions. So. Yeah. You said Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa said I did a drawing of him as Aquaman, and um, I think a lot of people bought the print to have him sign it. Um, at, Which at, was like right when he was announced as Aquaman. Yeah. Too. Like you, yeah. you hopped on. That. I jumped on that shit. Yeah. I was like Aquaman, eh? Because <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, Aquaman is suddenly. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 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 And, um, yeah. He's yeah. not the guy that's throwing a freaking um, starfish at you from the ocean. Like, now you get in here, the ocean, and I'll kick your ass. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of people um, bought my print and had him sign it. And I, they brought it back to me and showed me, and, and, you know, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I started, like, putting my business card in there and be like, yeah, tell, tell him to call me. <laughs> <laughs> As a joke, and then yeah, one time I saw. A dude. FBI Five can go to John. You'll you'll go right. hang <laughs> <laughs> Aquaman. Yeah, and then I saw a guy walking like it just. I, this guy was really like he really stood out. I was like, there's a tall ass guy was wearing, wearing an urban hat? sombrero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an urban sombrero. I was like, that yeah. guy wearing that urban sombrero really looks like Jason Momoa. Oh my god, it is Jason Momoa. Oh my god, he's stopping. Oh my god. He's like, hey, how are you doing? And I was like... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you beakered him. And then I died. (laughs) And that is why you see me currently in my incorporeal form. (laughs) You look great. (laughs) Thank you. I mean, that's kind of cool if like a a patron comes back and says, hey, I bought your print and this person said... Yeah, um, I have a photo of uh, someone's... Carrie Fisher print that they bought for me, and they had ah, her sign it. And that means a lot, yeah. you know. That's awesome. Um, yeah, a few, a few of them. Uh, somebody took one of my John Waters prints and had him <laughs> oh, yes. sign it for me before he got pissed off at, at me and yeah. stopped signing them. But that's a whole. Other <laughs> I'm not thing. signing this. That's, you get tired of signing those. You pissed off John Waters. I did. I pissed off. I don't think that's that hard. But we love John Waters. We love also, him. Still. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a rite of passage. Yeah. Some cool stuff. Like uh, your Leia, you know, she got signed. I did the uh, a little They Live head, too. And uh, that was at, oh, uh, yeah. in Indianapolis, Rowdy, Rowdy Piper was there. This was before he passed away. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And somebody came back and showed me that they had him sign the They Live head. So it's kind of cool to think that celebrities yeah. actually have seen the work that we do. Stan, Stan, Stan Lee. Though, the one, yeah, Stan Lee has signed some of the work. Yeah. And like yeah, like like you know, Carrie Fisher's past, but it's kinda cool to think that she got to see Katrina's drawings yeah. and Roddy Piper got to see the They Live Head and John That's... Waters got to see her stuff and then got pissed off at her. <laughs> well I think he just got pissed off because he wasn't making the money. <laughs> he was jealous. Yeah. yeah. He was jealous. <laughs> For doing all these conventions and going from place to place almost every weekend, like how are you guys pushing that work? Are you guys doing it on the road or like I mean like literally it feels like you have like three days to do it and then back on the road. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, okay. We're not gone every single weekend. I you know It's like every other day. every other weekend yeah. on average. Um but yeah, when we're home, uh um, we're making. working. You're working. We're working. Um I don't ever see this guy. We live together. It's like, you know, he's Fred Flintstone and he goes to to work at the wherever Fred Flintstone the quarry the quarry quarry. (laughs) for Mr. Slate down in the basement and um and I'm also a Fred I'm Barney Rubble I'm not Wilma I'm Barney Rubble upstairs um petting the cat (laughs) and uh yeah so we we do work a lot in between the conventions it's we don't really work on the road no that's hard to do I can't draw in a damn car I try doing it briefly like take stencils with me and cut them out but it's the van is packed with all of our shit, yeah. Yeah. all of our, all of our grid wall, all of the artwork, all of mm-hmm. the prints, and then our luggage. Yeah. So we don't. Yeah, we don't. Do I, I tried to draw in the van once. Yeah. It didn't Urgh. work. It was like, Urgh. yeah. <laughs> no. There's a line. You gotta have um, stability. Yeah. Literally, and then um, it's. I mean, so I, I see a lot of people at booths working on stuff at the booth. And but those people ain't selling anything. They're yeah. just drunk. You gotta talk to the people. Yeah. No eyes and smiles, my so, man. I cannot work. <laughs> I can't work at the booth. I can't. But today I did solve a Rubik's cube at the booth. But it was slow. Yeah. <laughs> also, the Rubik's cube broke. But then I put it back together, and then I solved it. So there's that. My man. I'm proud. <laughs> <of that. laughs> 
there's like there's something that you said in there that kind of you know hit me was like there are slow conventions yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know we've all experienced it the one thing i would always say is never get down about that stuff you can't you gotta keep moving forward you gotta push through it because if you take that for what it is and it lets you affect you you're done i think as long as you are doing conventions on a consistent basis it 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 basically averages out yeah yeah i i remember the first couple of times we had a slow one or here and there i was a little discouraged but you get over that Quickly. Get worried, there cause... are really good ones and then ones that are really slow and it's like it doesn't mean that you suck it just means that's just the way it is yeah. so, so kind of concluding this segment and stuff do you have any advice for any um, you know punk ass kids that want to try to get into this mm. yeah. Yeah. yeah I I just tell people um, mm. if you want to do this for a living um, the first thing you need to do is build up some inventory uh, what I did was I made a few big drawings, um, something that'll catch the eye at the booth, you know, make a few n- nice pieces that you can show off, learn how to photograph them, find a good printer, and then, you know, get your prints made, photograph your own stuff, you know, edit, get good at editing your stuff, just magically get good, no, I mean, Magic. you can, learn, there are plenty of YouTube videos yeah. that teach you how to edit, um, your stuff. Photographing it well, lights. Yeah. Lighting um, doesn't have to be that complicated. If it can you be use outdoors. natural, natural yeah. light is really good. I I use natural light for. Or if mine. you can find a large scanner. Uh, if you can find a large, a scanner is very nice. That would work too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you know, just uh, start with that base. That is a strong base to start with, and then um, from there, work on your selling skills. You know, just like don't come off like a a weird, desperate person. Just you know, have empathy. Empathy, empathy goes a long way, really. You know, just try to imagine what it's like to be that person walking up to your booth. Like, how do you want to be treated? You know, mm-hmm. and treat that's the person really that point. way. Um, that's what I do, and because uh, I'm, you know, I'm shy. I'm not. I'm, I'm introverted. I'm not an outgoing person. And when I'm looking at other people's stuff, I don't like people trying to come up to me and. Like, I don't like to feel like people are forcing me to buy something. I, I want to feel like I made the decision, but I also want to know what the hell I'm looking at. So keep stuff like that in mind, and then you'll do all right. How about um, you guys got any tips on, like, where to find these conventions? For someone that's like, I'm interested in doing a convention. Mm-hmm. I would say, like, I, I do, like, I basically do all the booking for the cons. I find conventions... For me, uh, the internet is incredibly valuable. I'm mean, basically you can just Google whatever state you're in, Indiana Comic Con, and then you just gotta Get research. Them all. Yeah, you gotta look at them. You gotta see who the guests are. You gotta see how much a booth costs. When it's due. When it's yes, you gotta see uh, how to apply for it. Uh, so you have to plan all this ahead. Um, yeah. You, so, don't you look at photos of like? I do. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll go like on their Instagram account or their mm. Facebook page. To you want to see people. I want to see what this con looked like last year. If it looks like it had a good crowd, good guests, good vendors, then I'm more inclined to do it. I also look at the guest list of conventions because, again, if, like, we know David Tennant's going to be there, then we have a good chance of selling a lot of our David Tennant prints, which is just uh, helps us to pay our bills. If some, like, if the big draw is going to be, like, some YouTuber yeah. gamer people, we may not do so. Yeah, because we don't. We're old. That's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, in addition to like the stuff that she said, because it's true, you want to find a good print shop to make prints. You know, uh, you. You have the bread and butter in conventions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's nice that people price will. Points yeah, you gotta. Yeah, Multiple. some some people do buy originals, but that's kind of rare. Yeah. So you need to have prints that are ten dollars, twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. You know. These different price points. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and if you got a button maker, that's cool. Yeah. Get some buttons of your print. Mm-hmm. Stickers. Stickers, stickers. Stickers are good sticker too. Packs, yeah. People buy yeah. them. It's always. It's never a loss. Patches and enamel pins. Are They're huge. Massive. Yeah. Oh yeah, now yeah, yep. yeah. That's yep. yeah. 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 The uh, only other thing that I also wanted to add was if, if somebody wants to do this as a living, if they want to make a living as an artist going to conventions, the one thing that they need to realize is the amount of work that has to go into it. It is literally working every single day, your whole waking hours. We we don't ever take time off, honestly. 
And she's right. Like, even though we live together, she only sees me a couple hours a night because I'm always in the basement making stuff because we can't make it on the road. When we're on the road, we're selling. And then when we come home, we have to sleep for a couple days because we're so exhausted from working three days nonstop. And, and then the drive it. time. And then I got to wake up. And then you have to remake everything again. So it is, you have to basically accept the fact that you're not going to have a social life. But, but, <laughs> but, but, but you're doing you're your what you love. Boss, you, you you're doing doing what you love. You're doing what you love. And you don't um, have to worry about up. Uh, having a boss that treats you like garbage. Exactly. Which you can treat yourself like garbage. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Do it all the time. Yeah. This is awesome. I think a lot of people. Um, this is a lot of good advice from both of you guys. I mean, you guys have been in this for quite some time. You guys have done huge conventions. I mean, freaking right off the bat, one of the biggest in the Midwest. So, uh, going off, you guys. Uh, have any conventions happening in the fall? The fall. Or oh, how do people find... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We're, we're going to get that social media blasting right now. The uh, conventions that we have booked so far are uh, we're doing a um, very small convention in Chicago next week, uh, which is, I think, like Chicago PopCon or something. It's in no, McCook. Mid, mid, or mid Chicago Comic Con. Chicago or Mighty Con or something. Mighty Con. Can't remember. Sorry. It's a small one. And then after that, we're going down to Florida. At the end of the month for the Florida Supercon. I'm doing the Raleigh Supercon oh, yeah. next week. That okay. Oh, okay, so you won't be there at the Chicago. Florida? Yeah. Or no. Mighty Con, the Chicago Mighty no. Con. Okay. No. Okay. And then we are in September or uh, August we've got Indiana Toy and Comic Expo in Bloomington. Always we're, a good show. It's a good show. Yeah. We're probably gonna end up doing also Wizard World Chicago the same weekend, so we're actually gonna double book a con. So she's going to work, and I'm at one, I'm going to work at the other. Isn't this the first time you've done that? Yes. yes. Yeah. You guys yeah. always we're tag team. We're going to try to double our money. Yeah. And then, um, and then in September, we've got uh, Horror Hound, which is in Indianapolis. That's a good one. That's yeah. uh, awesome. And then at the end of the month, uh, Scarefest, which is in Lexington. Mm-hmm. And that is September? Yeah. What's in after the end September? of September. That's September 29th through October yeah. 1st? October, uh, I don't think I, we have anything booked yet. i got to look up to see what we're doing. But I do have a gallery show in October at Gallery F. Yeah. And this is a group show. It is. It's a two-man group show, myself, at Beyond 5, and then uh, another great artist uh, who goes by the name R6D4. He does stencil work as well. and It's, it's very similar in, in style and substance, and I, I love his work. I've always wanted to... I actually have had been in a group show with him with some other people, but this time it's just he and I. And it, and it happens at the end of October. So the, the name of that show is The Lords of Chaos. And where can they... What, what gallery is that That's going to be at Gallery F in Chicago. Right now. So if I'm not able to see any of these cities or whatnot, man, you got anything on the World Wide Web? The World Wide Web. The World... www. You don't have to say the W-W. Yeah, you don't have to say H-T-T-P. So that's a home movies quote, by the way, for anybody. Yeah, I'm on... I've got an Epion 5 Facebook page, which is just, you know, facebook.com slash Epion 5. I've got an Instagram account, which I get a lot of business from, which is just Epion 5. At Epion 5. Yeah, and then I just built a website, which is just epion 5com So you can see some of the work on that, as well as I do have a web store on epion 5com where I sell not prints, really, because we travel so much, I don't want to deal with trying to keep track of the print inventory, but I do sell a lot of the spray-painted wooden heads that I do. And screen prints. And, uh, yeah, screen prints, yep. yep. And it's funny, like, today uh, I just got a, a notification that two of those large wooden heads sold on the website. Nice. One of them I actually don't have in stock, which means as soon as we get back from this con, mm-hmm. got, got to, to work, work. got back to go in the work. basement, got to make it and ship it. Yeah. How about you, Katrina? Uh, my presence on the interwebs is, um, well, basically, I just tell people to Google me, Google my name. It's Katrina Catazone. And I will spell it for you, because it's kind of a long name. K-A-T-R-I-N-A-C-A-T-I-Z-O-N-E. I'm the only one on Earth with that name, so I'm easy <laughs> to find. Um, but really, I only have like a Facebook page. I, ha- I do have an Instagram account, but I, don't, I haven't posted on it in a couple years. But if you want, you can go on it and see some of the work in progress from back in the day or whatever. I always tell people, just find me in person. And buy me, buy, buy myself, buy and give me some of your money. <laughs> I will not be mad at you, or whatever. Well, we are very excited to have both of you here. Oh, thank you for having us. I think us. we got a real good insight in the convention life. 
And, and you're a first guess. Yeah. Oh, first yeah. Guess. yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. It's, it was a pleasure Thank and an you. honor. Thank uh, you. Well, that wraps it up. Yeah, it's late. Usually. I'm Jake Lee. Brian Arisol. Katrina Kedizom. Happy on five. And that's it. That's a wrap. Thanks, guys. Hey gang, thanks for listening to the episode. If you like what you hear and you want to send us an email, you can do that at aobpodcast at gmail.com. That's aobpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can swing by the website, which is aobpodcast.wordpress.com. And that even has a form for you to send the email that way. There's also show notes on there. We would really like it if you would you know, rate and review the podcast on iTunes, and we are on Google Play now. Once again, and as always, thanks for listening.